Hi guys and welcome to the video. My name's Hugh, I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Unify UAP AC in-wall access points, these things here. The reason I want to talk about these is because I think that this product is a fantastic product and they're not really um, sort of talked about enough, I don't think they're sort of known about enough and um, people are always a little bit uh, sort of surprised about them um, and also because I'm in the UK and this is an American product and there's a few little quirks that um, come when installing them so the second part of this video is going to be all about the sort of uh, quirks of installing them in the UK and some sort of tips and tricks. So what is this? Um, it's a wireless access point so I'm not going to go into too much detail about what a wireless access point is hopefully you know that if you don't then I'll do another video on that. Um, difference between this one this is called as I said the in wall um, so it sits on a socket set face so it sits in the or on the wall in a socket face as it's screwed into that socket face and um, normally it's sort of much lower height than a normal traditional access point so something like that access normal access point would either be normally on a ceiling or perhaps on a wall and um, these ones are actually sort of in the wall at sort of socket level um, so they're really good products. They basically um, require a cable connection as all access points do. The cable connection to feed these is into the back. Okay, um, So uh, it requires a cable to go straight to the back, which, which sort of fits in with the in-wall idea that obviously that's screwed to the wall and the cable feeds into the back. Uh, they're dual band. Um, they are obviously powered by PoE. Um, they only take seven watts and they can, they've got also two ports on the bottom. Um, one for it which is a uh, PoE pass through and it does mm -hmm. um, I think up to 19 watts so you can actually if you wanted to you could potentially daisy chain these I've never done that but I have tried it and it does work um, you, could, you could also you know say you wanted a, a different type of access point so something like this well not necessarily this product but something like that you could daisy chain them off so there is uh, there is more PoE that come out of this you might want to put an IP phone on it as well if you need a PoE for that so um, it's got pass through and it's also got another socket at the bottom. The nice thing about this is that quite often these may replace uh, a normal RJ45 port, so something like this. Um, you might take that off and then put this on and you don't lose the, the sort of hard uh, cable connection so you can still use those at the bottom. In fact you've got twice the amount you normally you had before. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's sort of a, a little bit about them. Um, they are 802.11 AC um, and they don't, it's not only this product actually, Unify do uh, three of these uh, different products. So this is sort of the most basic model, um, but for domestic use, it's absolutely fine and, and probably for sort of small business use would be absolutely fine as well. Um, there's also a pro version, which has got slightly uh, better, uh, part, sorry, slightly better Wi-Fi uh, on the 5G. So I think it's up to 1300 megs on that. Um, and there's also a HD model, which I've never used, um, but it looks like an absolute beast. It's got four ports on the bottom. Um, and obviously the HD, as with the other HD by Unify, are gonna be for, um, for a lot of clients, basically. Um, so that's a little bit about them. I'm not gonna go into massive detail on sort of specs of it, etc. You'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to find more information about that on, on other YouTube videos. Um, so the next thing is all about installing them. So where this product is fantastic is where you've got existing cabling in your home or in your business and you can just change them out. So where you've got a faceplate, a socket like this, and you just take this off, basically put a head on the, on the cable so it's, it's got an RJ45 head on it, and then you just plug it in the back and sort of screw this to the wall and that's it. And then you've just got to get your PoE at the other end. PoE can come in either the form of an injector or a switch. Uh, something like the US 8 uh, 60 watt port, uh, switch would be absolutely fine for this um, and then that's it you're done so if you've got an existing cable network using these is so much easier than having to run new cables for ceiling mounted access points that's where these can be absolutely brilliant um, also if you want um, if people are looking for a, something a little bit more discreet so things you can sort of hide behind things for example like a, a sofa or you know like a bit of furniture then these are a bit better because they sit a bit lower and um, whereas you ceiling mounted access points some people find them that they don't like having things on the ceiling other than smoke alarms obviously etc so um that's that's why i sort of find these products really good is, is just really when you're you're putting them in when when people have already got the cabling but also it's quite easy to install these on external walls so say for example you're running cable externally 
uh, around the house um, that's all finished. You can just drill in uh, and, then, and then install these onto, onto the external wall. And it's quite a simple installation really in comparison to getting a cable into the ceiling and then and then down, um, especially on on the foot, on the ground floor where there's no no way sort of getting into it. New builds have got um, chipboard floors, etc. So a really good product in that sense. The disadvantage of these products is you really can only come in the back, um, so you can't feed them any other way. So with these, for example, you can come in a cable can come in on the side, um, whereas these ones they just come in the back, so they really are just used for in wall. So. Uh, in the UK, we have a slightly different socket arrangement than the, in um, the USA. So this is a sort of USA shaped socket, whereas we have a socket that looks well, basically like this. Um, so there's a bit of a sort of obvious, obvious change there. And um, this does actually fit a U UK socket if you turn it sideways and they've actually got the holes for it as well. I don't like that. I don't think it looks very good um, because of branding sort of on the side and got ports on the side here as well so it doesn't look very good so I tend to use a single um, I'm just going to talk you through the sort of different options there so if you are installing in the UK um, the type of wall that you're going to be installing on is going to be the main thing that impacts uh, what you use so for example if you are installed in best case scenario on a stud wall so stud walls are brilliant because you can get the cable in behind them um, and, and you can cut into that wall nice and easily. So if you've got it in a stud wall, make sure that you're not right on a stud, but if you're on a bit of plaster, nice bit of plasterboard, um, you can use a plasterboard box, um, back box like this, obviously just cut it out, screw it, um, and then you can literally just screw it on and they fit really nicely like that. Um, I don't do that on plasterboard because there's no real requirement because you can just cut a hole out either with a hole saw like this, or you can use just a plasterboard saw, cut out the cut out the little shape just enough to fit that bit in, basically this bit here, and then you can just screw it straight to the wall. Um, obviously, either put a bit of batten behind it just to make sure it's firmly attached to the wall, or you can use plasterboard screws, um, and then that's it. I mean, these are really light; they'll just plug in, and that's that's a really nice, easy installation on on plasterboard. Dot and dab. You can use a similar principle, so if you have managed to, say there's been building work going on and you've managed to lay the cables um, as a sort of first fix um, and then you've got um, the cable the cables running behind the plasterboard, you can actually just cut this out before you get the cable in, cut out a hole, pull the cable through and then when it's all finished you can then just attach that to the wall. The only thing I find is that plasterers do tend to fill those holes in, so sometimes you have to come back and knock them back out with a... Um, with a saw or, or some kind of um, chisel of, of some sort um, but that's a really good way of doing it on dot and dab as well if the wall's already finished and it's dot and dab um, and you've somehow managed to get a cable behind it um, or if you're coming in through the wall from behind and it's dot and dab I would recommend um, just if you if you can't just chisel out the hole um, then you can use a, a metal back box as well um, especially if you sort of come in from below sometimes it's easier just to use um, a metal back box um, but it's up to you. Hole saw is, is the preference really just because it makes it a little bit easier. So if you don't have the option of uh, either dot or dab or, um, or you basically order a stud wall then you can use surface mounted boxes like these. Um, there's, these aren't great to be honest so you might be tempted to use a 15mm back box you can use it, but you have to be really careful on it because there's no room for a manoeuvre really on that because once you've got, you might say, well, actually, that's not very big, but once you've got a RJ45 head plugging into the back of that, if you imagine this, then you've not really got any room for manoeuvre whatsoever. So you have to either use a sort of stubby head or you have to have some sort of space for this to go behind it for the, for the, rest, for the cable to go. Um, so I don't really use, recommend using a 15mm, so I would use a 25mm box. If you're using these boxes, the problem is, is that although they should fit in terms of the width, they don't really because they've got this bit of a curved edge on, or sorry, a slanted edge on it. And basically that means that from the side you'll see that there is like, well that's not perfectly lined up, you'll see there's like a gap at the top there, you get a gap, um, which doesn't look particularly attractive. You can use a bit of decorator's cork and just fill that gap. Um, not ideal, but it looks better than if you don't do that. 
Um, and the other thing you'll notice is that by the time we've got 25 mil box, 25 mil box on and this on, it looks a bit ugly to be honest. It just looks like it's sort of hanging off the wall. So I will use that, but that's the last resort. Um, and really, if I know it's going to be hidden behind something, then I'm, I'm quite happy to do this. If it's not, then, then I'm more reluctant to do that. So this is the sort of quirks of doing it in the UK. Um, so that's hopefully given you a few bits of information. I was really just trying to um, sort of advocate this access point and also just give some tips and tricks because um, it really does... Uh, is a bit of a confusing one. Oh, I should mention as well, if you are going to screw this to the wall, don't use rounded head screws. Make sure you use flat head screws because otherwise when you screw this back on, it will push out on the access point and you won't get the cover back on. So make sure you use flat head screws on this. Um, yeah, so that's about it. I hope you found this, um, this video helpful. I feel like I've been rambling a bit, but hopefully it's provided a little bit of insight. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, then uh, please put them below. Thanks very much.